eat the bread of life. Quench our thirst and feed our hearts. Use me like your vessel, and as you quench and feed the hearts of your people, I also pray that you do so unto me. Use me like your vessel as I bring this message to all of us. This we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have your seat. Praise the Lord. For those maybe who are, we are meeting for the first time, Andrew Karanja is my name. And this great morning, I have the joy of salvation. I once again continue welcoming all of you in our service. Feel that you are most welcome as we continue with this service. Our day of the year is fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Since it is the theme of the year, it is a process. And by the end of the year, each and every one of us will ask ourselves, how have I been fixing my eyes on Jesus? We have the areas that we are looking. We have wrote about knowing Jesus for the last four months. And this time, we will be looking on worship in truth and in spirit. So that after that, we will be able to ask ourselves, how are we going to please Jesus in our life? And at the end of the year, we will be telling us more about Jesus. Today, being the second Sunday of this month, will be looking, worshipping God in truth and in spirit. Praise the Lord. Worshipping the Lord in spirit and also in truth. We have learned in both texts. And now I'm going to dwell in the Gospel of John from verse 1 to the verse 24 where we have read, and I have three areas that we are going to dwell in this morning. By the way, what is worship? What is worship? Many people, they say it, and it can be true, that worship is a time that we invite the praise and worship to lead us with the praise songs and worship songs. They said that the worship. It they may be true. But in our Anglican church, we begin the worship at the best. Whenever those who are reading the service from the best when they prayed as they consecrate themselves, that is where the worship starts. The annunciation of the song there, it is a continuation of the worship in the church. And by the way, what is the worship? Is it singing? It is not enough. Is it praising? It is not enough. Is it leading the word of God? Is it praying? It is not enough. What is worship? It is all around. What we are going to see is the definition of the worship this morning. To worship, if you have this book, if you have this book, the book of common prayers, page 52, question number 20. Now, when we teach your children and the aunt about the catechism classes, one of the questions we let them know is about worship. And we ask them, what do we mean by the worship of God? 
Because all of us we say that we worship God, who is our creator. We worship our Father, who is our creator. We worship Jesus Christ, who is our redeemer. We worship the Holy Spirit, who revealed himself, who is the connector. To worship God is to respond to his love. To worship God is to respond to God's love. One or first by joining in the church offering of praise. By joining in the church offering of praise, that giving and prayer and by hearing the word of God. Number two is by acknowledging who is God in your life. And by acknowledging, it is not by my own wisdom, not by my own knowledge, not by my own that I am where I am, that I have what I have. It is by God, by acknowledging who is God as the Lord of my life and doing my work for his honor and glory. Born as a spirit. Praise the Lord. That is worship. And the people of this man and part of next man, we shall be looking even how we worship our Lord. How do we worship our maker? When do we worship our Lord? But we need to worship the Lord in season and out of season. From what we have read, you see the conversation between Jesus and this a Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman came after he saw Jesus and after Jesus told him all her secret, she said to Jesus, we are used to praise our Father. We are used to worship our Maker in this mountain. This mountain from our forefathers. And from our forefathers, they used to worship in this mountain. And she continued telling Jesus, and you Jews, you keep on telling us that the worship, the true worship, is done in Jerusalem. But Jesus wisely responded to her and he told this woman that the time has come the time has come and has come now when the true worshippers will neither worship the father in this mountain or in Jerusalem but the true worshippers they will be worshipping their father in spirit Praise When I was reading this text and this portion, I remember one of my rector at St. Angelo's Cabaret, who was our priest, she preached to us and she challenged us as a kanji in many by then. And she told us, we may miss the mark by thinking that we are we are in training at the theological college. And he told us we will be using all our times and all our resources at, at St. Anna's Cabal. But we fail to understand the intention of the one who called us to be in this ministry. And here, the same Jesus, he was telling this lady that the the mark, worshiping in Jerusalem, worshiping in that mountain, but they fail to worship the true God. Here, we are called upon, and the world is for you and I. And I need to ask myself as a vicar, whenever I'm worshiping my Lord, whenever I'm serving you, and as I say, that I serve the Lord because service to humanity is service to God. I need to ask myself, am I doing it in spirit and in truth? Because the time has come. The true worship, 
that they need to worship the Lord in truth, in spirit, and in truth, because that is what God desires. I need to ask myself as a Christian of SK Lika Memorial, the way I've been worshiping my Lord, am I, am I doing it? Have I been doing it? The way the Lord decides, because the Lord decides that we continue serving Him in truth and in worship, it is truth and in spirit. Am I asking, am I need to ask, I need to ask myself, let me use my choir. Choir, we need to ask ourselves, whenever we come here for training the whole week, the kind of the training, the kind of the presentation that we do on Sunday, am I doing it in truth and in spirit? Amen. Whenever we call upon to sing a song like what you have done this morning, that praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, is that coming from deep within my heart? Do I mean the kind of the praise that I'm praising by the Lord, the Lord will? Jesus. Well, this woman to note that that in there before they had missed the mark. But the time is now that they need to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. Praise the Lord. The way we have been worshiping the Lord, the way we have been praising the Lord, the way we have been giving ourselves, the way we have been committing ourselves to the Lord means how has it been? Is it in truth and in spirit? Jesus responded to this lady that God desired those people, those individuals, those who worship the Lord in their heart. And that is why we keep on saying that the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with what you have, serve the Lord, you are God. Yesterday I was reading the book of King. And I remembered the words of Ananias and Sapphira. They were asked by the angel of the Lord. Ananias and Sapphira. Wakati kulikuwa hujauza. Na wakati ulikuwa umeuza kile ambacho umeuza zote pamoja na wewe you belong to God what you have sold even before you sold it was belong to God and now you are here in the temple Jesus why do you lie and are near and you are seeing that you are doing the right thing. That you are saying that you are bringing all whatever you have agreed at the altar. But in an you remember, he was cheating. The same case with wife, whenever she was asked, he, she said, through the glory, that is what we have sold. Before they finished Anania breath his last breath because of cheating because of speaking right the time has come that we need to worship to serve in truth and in spirit praise God as I give myself as I give to one the one of the Lord Am I doing it the way the Lord decided? Or am I doing it on my own way? The Lord decided to worship us. Who will be worshiping the Lord in truth and in spirit? Number two. How is it? Why is it so important to worship the Lord in truth in spirit? And 
in truth, why is it so important? This is because the true worship, all of the worship, all of the worship of those who worship in truth and in spirit, it involve or involving surrendering all, surrendering our life to Jesus. We sing. Take my lips, 
and let them be consecrated to thee as I offer my personal sacrifice to you. Number four. The true worshiper must worship in the face of pain and loss. The true worshippers serve and worship the Lord in season and out of season. They say, it is my duty, it is my duty to worship the Lord. You know, they are also worship the Lord only on Sundays. Whenever they come to the church, but here the heart of the Lord is calling you and I. And that is why Jesus was calling this lady. The time has come. Not only in Jerusalem. Not only in the mountain. Not only in this mountain that God is in the morning. But we need to worship the Lord in season and out of season. Facing in the face of pain and loss. Remember, King David as it is demonstrated well in the world. In the midst of challenge, in the midst of pain and loss of his own child, he said, since the child has gone, he prayed and prayed. And since the child has gone, he removed his outer growth and worshipped the Lord. In his own, in his sanctuary. The book of Psalms says that David got up from the crowd where he was used to cry. He washed, he put on Roshan in his face and changed his clothes. He went into the house of the Lord and worshiped the Lord in the midst of pain and loss. Praise Lord. Like that time we were 2020 and 2022, 2021. Many people, instead of worshiping the Lord in Sunday time, others they neglected the Lord, others they disturbed, they, they deserted the Lord because of the loss due to COVID. But here we are. We need to worship the Lord in the midst of pain and in the midst of loss. Others, they could even hate God. Others, they could even say, for me, I don't believe here is God. If I have lost my job, if I have lost my members of my family, if I have lost my friends, if I have lost one, two, three, I don't believe and where is this God? But King David, he worshipped the Lord in the midst of and finally, before final, it is so important that in times of pain and loss, we move toward God, rather than away from Him. King David, instead of moving away from God, he came very close to God in that time of pain. Worship. Those who worship the Lord in spirit and in they celebrate who God is and what he has done in their lives. And that is what we claim in Psalms 100, verse 1, 2, verse 5. That we praise the Lord who gave it. We praise the Lord who did this and that. We praise the Lord who is able to praise us. Finally, that is that now it there are so many things that hinder you and I to worship God in truth and in worship, and in truth and in spirit. Jesus said in verse 23, Yet a time is coming, and it has now come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit, the Father seek those two worshippers. There are so many things that hinder us not to worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Number one, here I want just to mention an repentant heart, an repentant heart, and a sinful heart. If Christians has an repentant heart and a sinful heart, that he 
wanted you and I to serve the Lord. Remember, the Lord Jesus said, if we say we have no sins, we deceive our, we deceive ourselves. Remember, Ananiah and Sapphira, they failed to repent their sins. They went at the altar knowing that they are cheating the Father. So, one of the things that hinder Christians not to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth is having the heart is not repenting the sins. John preached the message of repentance and he could say, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. When do we repent? How do we repent? Why do we repent? Do we forgive? Do we confess our sins so that we repent our sins to the Lord? Number two, if Christians fail to remain well connected in the life of prayers, if they fail to fashion their life in the life of prayers, if we fail to pray, that is another way that hinders us not to worship the Lord. Because when we pray, we know the will of God. In the same book of common prayer, if you see number that one, you see about the prayer that it is lifting up our heart to God, our heart and mind to God. We adore, we confess our sins, we ask to be forgiven. We thank him, we pray for ours and others and ourselves as we also we listen to seek God and do his will. It is through prayers we seek God's will. Bona is also doing. It is through prayer we confess our sins. It is through prayers we remain well connected with God. Number three, when we were ourselves with children, we were taught this song. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to, to grow. How do we read the Bible? How do we read the Bible? <laughs> Page 53 of the Book of Common Prayer. You know, I'm bringing the things that we have at our hands so that we may know. Page 53, item number 95. It shows us how should we Read the Bible. We should read the Bible with a desire. We should read the Bible with a desire and prayer that through it, God will speak to us by His Holy Spirit and enable us to know Him and do His will. Praise the Lord. That is how we should read the Bible. We should read the Word of God. When, now the question is, when do we read the word of God? Read the word of God daily. Praise the Lord. And in the morning, read the word of God. Maybe at the hour, during the lunch hour, read the word of God. In the evening, read the word of God. And you will see God revealing himself in you and in your life. So, how do we read? Where do we read? Why do we read the word of God? And I thank those who are in the members of TEE in our church. They keep on searching the knowledge of the word of God. Thank you very much, TEE members. Because daily you keep on searching the knowledge of the word of God so that you may continue growing in the knowledge of God and his grace. And finally, and even those in our prayer cell, we have the Bible studies. Let us continue doing so with those Bible studies. Let us continue with the PE classes in our lives. Finally, another heaven is that hinder us not to seek God in the truth and in spirit is toxic attitude. 
toxic attitude. Either toward God, toward God, toward others, toward the church. For example, right the way I have issued the papers that we give toward the mission work, there are those who said, maybe who say, it is not me, it is not my time, it is not. I better, I better support my church. Well, but this is the church, this is an umbrella within the diocese of Big. And at the diocesan level, we are requesting that we support the mission. The toxic attitude toward God, toward us. You know, there are those who hate us, not because of anything else. They naturally hate us. They naturally uh, despise us. Either because of how they look physically, or what they have or what they not have. Toxic attitude towards either us, towards God, towards church, towards your neighbor. As the Bible reminds us that we need to love others the way we love ourselves. The toxic attitude, for example, being ungrateful. Ungratefulness. It is one of the toxic attitudes. Dishonest. Dishonest. Jealousy is another toxic attitude. Despising us is another toxic attitude. Pride is another toxic attitude. And remember, the Bible says that God hates the proud but uplifts the humble. Jesus responded that whatever is important, not where, not where the worship take place, but how it take place in us. Jesus responded that the true worship should worship the Lord, should worship Him in spirit and in truth. That is within their soul, in the truth, that is with sincerity. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.